We share the same evolutionary origins, we inhabit the same world, and we are ruled by the same laws of nature. We are all the same. Animals are not ours to eat, wear, experiment on, use for entertainment, or abuse in any other way. As you can see, animal exploitation results in thousands of victims every year, and this is why we strongly condemn it and consider that there are no consistent arguments to justify the abuse. Thank you for your attention. Good afternoon. My name is Bronislava Pokorna and I am representing Gymnasium Alejova in Košice, Slovakia. My partners, Mihaela Beis from Romania and Lucia Calderon Garcia from Spain, strongly affirm the resolution which states that exploitation of animals should be allowed. I, as the first speaker, will speak about the issue in general and point out the difference between the rights of humans and animals as living beings. Our second speaker, Mihaita, will elaborate on the fact that testing on animals brings about important scientific breakthroughs. And finally, our third speaker, Lucia, will talk about the importance of animals for hunting. So, in the recent case, a growing number of people feels that the humans should animals should not have be, uh, by, be exploited by people and they should have the same rights as humans. While others argue that others argue that it's <laughs> that they should have the same rights that they must employ people to satisfy their varying needs, including uses for food and research. Morally, most people may agree with the simplicity of the motion that the exploitation of animals should be condemned. However, very few people would actually practice a lifestyle that to ensure not contract the belief. If an animal's life is equal to human, then you have a moral obligation to ensure you never assert your importance or their own. Did you check to make sure the city, the state, the neighborhood you live in didn't displace or kill thousands of animals while being created? If not, then you don't live in this don't live by a standard of equality with any animal other than your own species. And do you know that we can find bones in jelly candies? And do you mind? Do you? Everyone seems to be against the exploitation of animals, but no one, no one seems to realize how many animals' products they use or consume in their everyday lives. Before we start, I must clarify a few things. We are not proponents of harming any animals without a meritable social acceptable reason. As such, we will not be advocating those, those practices in any way. We will, however, show that consuming and testing on animals for one's own and if it can be perfectly moral, well, in line with the law of nature. We believe it's acceptable for several reasons. Firstly, legally, an animal's life is, is not important as a human. We think that humans are the most important beings in, in, on the planet, and everything must be done to ensure human survival. If this means experimenting on animals um, so we can fight and find cures for diseases and this takes priority of animal suffering. Furthermore, it's believed by some that animals do not feel pain or loss as humans do. So if we have to kill some animal for food or other uses, that is morally acceptable. Historically, animals have not 
be considered to have interest at all, or their interest have not been considered equal to human interest. In his book, Interest and Rights, Frey, the author, is saying that animals don't have interest because, uh, because they uh, don't have experience, wants, desires, expectations, or remembrances. Rights uh, don't apply to animals because rights are essential to humans, and that's the point commonly made by those who who oppose the animal rights movement. And another and last important argument condoning on uh, condoning testing of animals is uh, biomedical research. Animals are used in biomedical research, uh, some to test cosmetics or household cleaning products and some are used in a class dissection to teach teenagers uh, the anatomy of frogs or to have a subject for PhD dissertation. Yes, all this is true, but, uh, but none of us would want that these products have been tested on us and our DNA runs. Few people today would condom experimenting on human beings in harmful ways. In fact, in the case of this, such research is strongly restricted by law, but it isn't just prohibited outright. When experimentation on humans is permitted, it is always in the context of the individuals involved consenting to it. But these people are only exception. So in the words of you know of Darwin's theory, stronger survives. I know it's cruel, but necessary. Doctors are looking for new drugs which are needed, and new diseases are threat. So, we must let the medicine advance if we want the best for our families, and we have to suffer. We have to sacrifice something. So, that's all. Thank you for your attention.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mihaitze, and I'm an expert in support of the resolution referred to the scientific brevity. Before sharing with you our second argument, I would firstly like to respond to the opposition's case. Helen has told us about unethical practices and has tried to explain that it is not moral to kill a living creature while trying to save another. But let me ask you a question too. If you had to choose just one creature which could live, live a mouse or a little girl with, uh, who had that terrible disease, which would you choose? Well, I think we all agree that trying to prevent the most obvious cases of unnecessary suffering or torture of animals is reasonable. But you should also know that using animals in research and experimentation is essential to the development of new and more effective method methods for diagnosing and treating diseases that affect both humans and animals. Moreover, in our opinion, the information Ellen has shared with us is not updated, and starting from the 19th century, reform began leading to more human treatment of animals and found in groups like the American Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals to improve the condition of all animal species. Animal research, for example, is highly regulated with laws in place to protect animals from mistreatment. In addition to local and state laws and wildlife, animal research has been regulated by the Federal Animal Welfare Act since 1966. As well as stipulating minimum housing standards, enclosure size, temperature, access to clean food and water, uh, and others, research animals are carried for by veterinarians, husbandry specialists, and animal health technicians to ensure their well being <coughs> and more accurate findings. As I was saying, my more referred to the scientific breakthrough, that is to the major progress that science has made to, to animal testing. In this respect, in support of my argumentation, it is important to note that animal science experiments are absolutely essential in making major medical advances. This is because there is no adequate alternative to testing on a living whole body system. Living systems are extremely complex and animals are appropriate research subjects because they are similar to human beings in many ways. They are susceptible to many of the same conditions and illnesses, including heart disease, cancer and diabetes. Animal testing has contributed to many life-saving cures and treatments. The California Biomedical Research Association states that nearly every medical breakthrough in the last 100 years has resulted directly from research using animals. Experiments in which dogs had their pancreas is removed led directly to the discovery of insulin, critical to saving the lives of diabetics. The polio vaccine tested on animals reduced the global occurrence of the disease from 3,000 uh, 200,000, 250,000 cases in 1988 to 223 cases in 2012. Animal research has also contributed to major advances in understanding and treating condi conditions such as breast cancer, brain injury, childhood leukemia, cystic fibrosis, malaria, multiple sclerosis, tuberculosis, and many others. Chris Abey, director of the University of Texas in the Anderson Cancer Center Animal Research Facility, states that, and I quote, we wouldn't have a vaccine for hepatitis B without chimpanzee, and says that the use of the chimps is our best hope for finding a vaccine for hepatitis C, a disease that killed 15,000 Americans annually. Moreover, not only humans, but animals themselves benefit from testing results. If vaccines were not tested on animals, millions of animals would have died from rabies, distemper, feline leukemia, infection of hepatitis, virus, tetanus, anthrax, and canine virus. Animal testing has also been instrumental in saving endangered species from extinction, including the black fluted ferret, the California condor, and the tamaris of grazing. The vast majority of biologists and several of the largest biomedical and health organization in the United States approved of animal testing. In 2011, a pool of nearly 1,000 biomedical scientists conducted by the Science Journal Asia found that more than 90% agreed that, that the use of animal in research is essential. The American Cancer, Cancer Society, the National Association for Biomedical Research, the American Heart Association, the Society of Toxicology, and the American, American Veterinary Medical Association all advocate the use of animal in scientific research. In conclusion, allow me to remind you that research on living animals has been practiced since at least 
by the hundred BC and it uh, has enabled to the, the development of many life saving treatments for both humans and animals ever since. Thus, it may be considered a necessary habit is the, as it has given us huge medical advances that we wouldn't have never came upon without it. In this respect, former UK Home Office Minister John Ray claimed that, and I quote, Animal research and testing has played a part in almost every medical breakthrough of the last century. It has saved hundreds of millions of lives worldwide. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Daniela Matuba and I am representing Vienna 